So everyone is always amazed at how many animals I have when I tell them. So I'm going to do a video on what it's like to feed all my animals and just to show what goes into taking care of all these different animals. So here we have Crash. He is a crested gecko. Um, his food mainly consists of Pangea completed gecko diet. Um, I also feed him some insects. So right now these are left over from last night. So he has a couple phoenix worms and he also has a hornworm that he hasn't been interested in. It's been living in there for a couple days. So I'll just wait till it's big enough and I'll feed it to my bearded dragon. Uh, for his tank, he gets fed in these. These are just beer saver caps. I get it at the Reptile Expo. They make it super easy to clean out because they don't have the rings around like a normal cap would. Once those are all washed out, uh, he gets a scoop of this, I believe, is the papaya. And then I give him a scoop of the fig and insects. Alright, after that, all I do is I get a spray bottle that I spray down his cage with. I already missed it. As you can see, it's wet there. And I mix in his water there. Mix in the food. So it's like a paste. There we go, once it's all mixed in, and he is all set. Um, like I said, these are phoenix worms. I also offer him wax worms every so often, and horn worms, but he likes the phoenix worms the best. And then I just leave this here for the insects to eat. So I have super worms in here, as you can see. They are thriving, thriving very well in his tank. Um, I'm going to have to probably get rid of some because they did so well. And then I check his water, which is back there. And these are all live plants in here, and he also has some moss to help keep some of the moisture in. And yeah, he's a, he's a happy fella. Next we have Ramsey. He is my bearded dragon. Uh, his diet is mostly vegetables, fruits, a little bit of fruits, but mostly vegetables leafy greens and squash. Uh, he does get some insects. Right now the only thing I have are hornworms. Uh, the rest of my insects will be coming in in a couple days. I order from Rainbow Mealworms and I get insects delivered every few weeks automatically. But right now I just have, oops, there goes the light, uh, phoenix worms. Uh, he also eats hornworms and waxworms, and I do have a colony of dubia roaches. So his diet was mostly insects while he was growing, uh, as he needed the extra protein because they grow so rapidly. But now that he's older, he doesn't get quite as many insects. Uh, he still gets some, though. And now that he's done eating his insects, I will go make his salad so he can have that for the rest of the day. His lights, as I knocked over here, he has a heating lamp and he has a UV bulb, which is very important for reptiles. Uh, it also needs replaced every six months. Uh, the only thing I don't have on this one is a reflector, so normally you have like a cover that reflects the light back so it is more intense in there. I do need to get that for him. The bearded dragons require a high uh, UV or else they get metabolic bone disease. So he already had some of that. It's his bone calcifies and there goes that light again. Deforms uh, some. So the back of his tail has a little bit of lumps. He had that when I got him due to improper husbandry. But it didn't get any worse because I had the proper diet and lighting for him once he came here. So typically whatever I give for one animal, that's what the rest are going to get for the day. So today we're going to have zucchini, yellow squash, 
uh, spring mix. I always normally add a little bit of spring mix. And then I have some beans from my garden, and then the fruit today will be grapes. So here's Ramsey's uh, salad completed. It's mostly spring mix. Um, he has a little bit of chopped up of the squash, and then for the fruit he got a little under a half a grape that's also chopped up. Uh, every couple days he also gets calcium powder added, but today he doesn't because he had it the other day. Another big part of his care is making sure his basking spot is hot enough. So you want it around 100 degrees. So, yep, right there, 102, that's good. And you also want to make sure the cool side is in the 70s. So this way he has the choice of heating up or to cool down because he is a reptile and he's cold-blooded so he relies on the sun in this case his bulb to heat up his body to allow for his organs to properly work and without a hot enough basking point he has a hard time digesting food and that can run into problems there. So next on the list we have these beasts here. Uh, <laughs> I have one green cheek conure and two budrigards they all share a cage, but it is a quite large cage. Um, I haven't had any problems with them ever fighting, so it's never been a concern of mine. It wasn't, I just got a new bird and they all got thrown in together. They had over a year of getting used to each other. Even from the first time that they met, there was never a problem between any of them. So that's the reason I cohab these two species. Normally I wouldn't recommend it um, due to size difference, but there hasn't been any problems at all. If there ever was any problems, then they'd have to be separated. But they do have many <laughs> food bowls, so everyone gets a chance to eat. So Hoover, perch, Hoover has to be perched or else he will try to attack me. Hoover, perch, perch. Perch. I know who. Perch. There we go. Okay, and from here, I can get out the food bowls without being bitten. <laughs> Isn't that right, Hoover? Good boy. I also have to do that for the water bowl. <clears throat> So all the food from yesterday gets dumped out and the bowls get cleaned. <clears throat> so the birds get the same thing the bearded dragon does. Spring mix, um, yellow squash, zucchini, uh, let's see, we also got some beans, uh, a little bit of grape. And they also get a bird seed mix. So I make this myself. It has um, some bird pellets in it, it has buckwheat, barley, some oats, uh, some nuts, different seeds, a little bit of dried herbs. This gets mixed up all the time. They don't get a lot because it's very fattening. <laughs> uh, common misconception is you can feed your birds an all-seed diet. It would be, as long as you gave them enough exercise as they would in the wild, that would be okay, but because they oftentimes don't have the same amount of exercise they do in the wild, they can't continue eating all seeds because seeds are very high in fat, so they, it often leads to health problems with their livers. So it's important to give them fresh fruits and stuff that aren't quite as high in fats, but still provide some healthy fats for them. Well, here's these guys eating. Hoover's a junk food, junk food bird. Hoover's the green chick on here, so he went straight for the nut. <laughs> Monet over there went for some green, green stuff. So next up we have my bunny Tess. She has an unlimited hay diet. Currently, uh, that's pretty much all she gets along with a little bit of fresh foods. 
She doesn't get a lot of pellets, or really any pellets right now, other than for an occasional treat, because she is on a diet. She is a fat bunny. <laughs> so, I'm going to go fill up her hay basket. So her hay basket just gets hung up, and she's able to either pull it from the top, or the sides, or when she cheats the system, she jumps in the hay basket and eats it. <laughs> it just gets hung up over her uh, litter pans, because they typically like to go to the bathroom where they're eating, so it just makes litter training a little bit easier. Uh, she also has her water bowl here, and we'll go give her her salad. And then she doesn't get a whole lot. Uh, it's the same thing as everybody else. Some squash, a little bit of grape, and some spring mix. Uh, like I said, she doesn't get a lot because she's on diet. <laughs> this isn't her cage, by the way. This is just where her litter pans sit. She's free roamed, so my room is her cage. Uh, she's a pretty good bunny, though. I mean, she's not the friendliest, but she doesn't try to eat everything in the room, so I appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the care for the bunny. Last but not least, we have my tortoise, who is not in here right now, because he is outside eating grass. So he is a sulcata tortoise. You'll see him in a little bit, <laughs> but I'll show you his care. So right here I have spag moss, which has been soaked. It just helps keep some of the humidity in. So I put it, I have a couple corners that I like to keep humid in his enclosure. So normally he has a hide right here, but it is outside with him right now. Uh, so I soak his spag moss and I put it in there. And his tank also, I guess it's not really a tank, his enclosure <laughs> also gets sprayed down. His diet mostly consists of grasses, weeds, and flowers. <clears throat> because they're from Africa and they are a grazing type tortoise. So right here he has some chopped up hay. He has a good bit left still. Um, on top of that, I make sure he always has some clean water. He mostly like, just likes to soak in it. His lights are off right now, but he has a heat bulb and a UV light. This one has the reflector, so it shines down in. Uh, he has to have a pretty high basking spot also to help digestion, and the UV helps with his normal growth of his bones. <clears throat> like I said, since his diet is mostly grass, weeds, and flowers, I do like to add a couple of these flower toppers. I got this at the store. It was only a couple dollars. And he has some like dried up uh, flowers and stuff, so it's nice, especially during the winter where I can't pick fresh ones from the garden. Uh, I add a couple of those into his hay and he always eats those right away. And a couple times a week he also gets a little bit of calcium dusted on his food, just like the bearded dragon. Um, he also a couple times a week gets leafy greens, but I have to be careful with feeding them a lot because they're rich in nutrients and he is mostly used to a hay diet. <clears throat> So it can cause problems with his growing because it's very high in nutrients. Uh, it causes him to grow too fast and can put deformities in his shell. So it's very important to stick to species appropriate foods for different animals. So here's Lou. He's out eating some grass. I also have some petals tore up of a flower that he can eat that's safe to eat from our garden. And his hide is currently an Amazon box. <laughs> uh, right now he just has this enclosure for when I put it out. It's not recommended because he can see through it and sometimes that can lead them uh, it to be stressful because they're trying to get through. But this is only very temporarily his enclosure for outside as I'll build one next year, but we're heading into winter now, and I had just got him, so we'll wait to see uh, how big he gets for the size enclosure I need next year. These guys end up getting pretty big, uh, roughly around 100 pounds, and they take about 10 years to grow. Uh, right now, he's about a year and a half old, so he still has some time to grow, but he will grow very quickly.